the trailer that I lived in, it was uh, your normal average size mobile home and it was put into a little lot on Nicole Road in East St. John, New Brunswick. I told my mother right from, right from the beginning, from the second month that we lived in the trailer, I told her weird things happened. I heard whispering and they took me to a child psychologist and then another child psychologist. And it was apparently figments of my imagination or some said lucid dreaming. Um, the doctors and my parents come up with various reasons. Just none of those reasons were accurate. Not being believed can be one of life's most frustrating occurrences. But what if you're a child, you're experiencing terrifying, and it's your parents who are doubting you? Hello, I'm Lawrence Chow. Today on Ghostly Encounters, we meet Donna and Andrew. Both remember seeing ghosts as children, and they both remember how it felt when their parents didn't believe them. A childhood home should hold many happy memories, but for Donna Marshall, hers are being stalked by a deformed ghost. say probably about a month I would be able to hear whispering in the hallway and I could never decipher if it was man woman a child it was just jumbled talking all the time and I couldn't understand how everybody could sleep so deeply or ignore it because I was just absolutely positive there was something there of the times I just stayed awake in my room and I did bring it up to my mother and father. I often would make that trek down the dark hall to my mother to get her to come and sleep with me and it affected me. It made my parents fight because here every night she had to come sleep with her child. I felt bad, and a lot of the times it made me not go wake her up and me just sit in my room waiting for morning to come. A lot of the times going through this, instead of going and getting my mother at the other end of the trailer and bringing her to my room, I would sleep on the couch in the front room, which was the next room to her. I remember laying on the couch and you would just randomly open your eyes and you would see the rocking chair rocking. And I would tell my parents that and uh, they didn't believe me. I don't know why they didn't believe me. They didn't see it, it didn't bother them. So therefore it was just a overact of imagination. A little while after that, I was laying there in my bed. I hadn't gone to sleep and I could still hear things in the hallway. I looked out and there was nothing there making the sound. And I just knew, should I go get my mother like I have many, many times before? And um, sometimes, most times, it was worth the risk. So this night I went up the hallway and I had to pass the bathroom on my right to get to my mother's room. And there was a figure in the mirror. I 
I often would make that trek down the dark hall to my mother to get her to come and sleep with me. And one night I was going and I had to pass the bathroom on my right to get to my mother's room. And there was a figure in the mirror, but I could only see a smoky shadow. So I couldn't see anything clearly, but it was saying, don't, don't turn the lights on, just come here for a minute. I looked out and there was nothing there making the sound. I was saying, no, I'm going to get my mom, and it got, come here now. I was frightened. I was, I was terrified. I didn't want to stay there, and I took off. I went right down to mom's, and I told her, and, of course, like you would say to any kid, there's nothing in the mirror, there's nothing. And I believe I slept on the floor on a blanket beside her bed that night. So I would, after that, make sure that the bathroom door was closed before I would even go to sleep at night. And when I was going to bed, it was a ritual. I would cover usually my window and my little mirror on my dresser. I would put my little grade five red Bible and my medallion underneath of my pillow. I believe it's called a St. Benedict medallion, and it has a Latin prayer on the back that is supposed to keep away evil spirits. No one had to tell me that they would help. I knew that that was the only form of protection I had. And the dolls, I just turned them all upside down because I felt like they were watching me. It was their eyes their constant watching eyes. Some of them I would stuff down far into the toy box. I remember some of the ones that looked maybe a little scarier than the one beside it used to get tucked real far down into the toy box. It was so hard. I It was the hardest time that I've to not be believed and to be tortured and not be believed. You know, when people say, oh, it was a dream, you know the difference between a dream or not. And then once you actually see something, that about does it for you. That's when you know you want to get out of there. One time, I did have my mother sleeping with me, and she was on the inside by the bed, and I was on the outside. And I heard banging on the door and voices chanting, let us in. Now, whether it was to get into my home or into my soul or into my life, I don't know. exact same time, this figure with some deformities in his face and huge eyes standing over me. I could just almost feel the hatred coming off of it. And I remember looking over towards my mom and shaking her, and she didn't wake up. And I looked back, and it was still standing there. She was right there, and so was it. And I knew that there was no protecting me then. And it just went away. The voices, the figure went away. You know, it, it's actually hard to, to talk about, about something so bad that happened as many years ago as it was. What I lived through was terror. We finally moved out of there, finally, and that heavy feeling was all gone and, and everything in here felt light and it was so nice to just, just sleep. And I slept and nothing hurt me, nothing even tried to hurt me. 
And that's when living for me began. When Donna moved to a new home, the ghost stopped appearing. But when Andrew McVicker changes houses, he has a very different experience, for it's under the new roof that his terror begins. I remember we had, we had lived in smaller homes before. Uh, we had mini homes up until then, and then we, mom and dad wanted to buy this. They found this house, it was a really good deal. It was big, it was out in the country, there was no neighbors, we had a big yard a road, there was a river down the road so that we could go swimming. So everything was all good, like it was the ideal place to live. And uh, I remember moving in and getting my own room and that made me the happiest I had ever been up until that time. It was shortly after I moved in that I'd start hearing things. sounded like doors opening, doors closing. There was footsteps, two to three maximum, because it really wasn't, you wouldn't really have to take more than two or three steps to get anywhere in the upstairs. My parents' bedroom was downstairs. My sister wasn't old enough to walk. When I heard these things, I'd lay in bed with my eyes wide open, scared, my heart beating fast. I could really hear my heart over anything else. Like, I'd lay there, and I'd just hear my heart just bumping in my chest, and I didn't know what to do. My parents would hear it, and they'd think that my brother and I were uh, awake running around upstairs. We'd get in trouble the next day for... Uh, not or for being up all night and uh or saying no we're not i know we're not eventually they they sent uh they sent me to a psychiatrist and in turn the psychiatrist said that uh, i was a sleepwalker so that kind of eased their mind on what the noises were upstairs of the house it bothered me that my parents didn't believe that it that it was it wasn't me like i knew it wasn't me like, I really did. I knew for sure it was me because I'm sitting there and I, I know what I'm doing. And I, they say you don't remember if you're a sleepwalker, but I was hearing the same noises that they would hear. And I was awake. I stayed over at a friend's house one night and uh, he slept with a fan on him. It was during the summer, so yeah, you needed a fan if you didn't have an air conditioner uh, just to keep you cool as you slept. And, I had an amazing sleep, and uh, I said, well, maybe I'll try doing something like that. So I convinced my mom to get me uh, a table fan, and so I slept with that on, and I was able to sleep at night. For a little while, anyways. My bed was up against the wall, so I was laying there, and uh, I had my fan on. And it was, I'd say it was probably around 2 o'clock in the morning. And I was awakened by something. So I felt somebody sit down in the blanket, kind of physically pulled me. I could feel it pulling on my body. I was the only one in the room. So why is my blanket being pulled? And I thought at first, I said, oh, maybe it's just the way that... I moved, it felt like my blanket was pulling me, but I could feel somebody sitting down. My heart began to beat really fast. I got really scared, and uh, I looked, and there was nobody. Now I was wide awake. Like I, There was no getting back to sleep after experience and something like that. Things were going through my head, like, what could this be? Who could it be? Is there somebody in my room? Like, I'm really scared now. I get up, and... I kind of checked out my room and looked all around. I looked in the closet and there was nobody there. And I looked around and it was a, it's a fairly big room um, and there was nobody. So I said, okay. So I opened the door and I, uh, I walked down the stairs. The stairs were really steep and the house was fair, fairly lit up. Like it might've been the moonlight. It was almost like there was lights on. 
so I walked across the floor. And, like, it was, a, it was a farmhouse, so the floor squeaks. over in the corner and there's this girl she's huddled up first I said Aileen what are you doing Aileen's my sister and I realized there's no way she could be out of her bed I mean she's five or six years old at the time and I'm looking at her and she's wearing like a white nightgown with like a blue bluish pattern like she was that close that I could see her and I said hey and then I said hey again louder and the girl brought her head up and looked right at me and I've never been so scared in my whole entire life and I screamed as loud as I could she was a girl in my house anywhere between 18 and 25 years old and her hair was wet she looked cold very pale I remember the expression uh, that's something that sticks in my mind it was just blank like there was no happiness there was no sadness it was just blank but it wasn't like she was looking at me. It was almost like she was looking right through me. My parents came out of their bedroom. I woke them up out of a dead sleep. And they, I was, I was losing it, literally losing it. And they brought me down on the floor and held me there until I stopped crying and screaming. Asking me what happened. There's a girl in the house. My dad searched the house. And there was nobody in the house. He searched the basement. He searched the attic. My dad had never been in the attic of his house that he bought, and he went up in the attic that night just to check, just to satisfy that there was nobody in the house but the people that were supposed to be in the house. So now, my parents think there's something wrong with me. They said I was half awake, half asleep, that I was sleepwalking and I saw her. I was wide awake. I knew what I saw wasn't a figment of my imagination. All that kept going through my mind was, who is this in my house? Why is she here? And why am I seeing her? When I first saw her, she was she was solid. That's why I thought there was somebody in the house. I knew what I saw it wasn't a figment of my imagination. I said to my dad, I said, she's in here, she's in here. No, there's nobody here. You're dreaming. But I was wide awake. So now, my parents think there's something wrong with me. My parents sent me back to the psychiatrist to see what was wrong with me. That all came back negative. I never, there was nothing wrong with me mentally. Then they just played it off to an adolescent growing up, uh, causing a stir, trying to get attention. But if I wanted to get attention, I would have done something stupid, not screamed and woke my parents up in the middle of the night saying I saw a ghost. I, I tried for a year to try to convince them that I saw something. And uh, after I couldn't convince them, I just let it go. I've asked around different stories, trying to figure out who this girl might have been. And uh, we lived on the side of a hill, and there was a marsh on each side. And uh, I had heard some, of some people maybe getting lost in the marsh. So this girl's hair was wet. She had definitely been in water. Maybe she's still out there. Maybe she was never found. And maybe she just finally wanted to rest, and she wanted one last person to see her because nobody saw her before she went missing. I never saw her after that, so maybe she just wanted somebody to know she was there. I don't really know. Neither Andrew nor Donna's parents believe them. Our experts tell us this is what usually happens in Western societies where our science-based worldview has no place for ghosts. But a son or daughter who is doubted may feel emotionally betrayed, and that can damage the parent-child relationship. Aboriginal societies have a very different attitude towards the paranormal. Many believe the world of spirits has the same reality as our everyday world, and so parents in these communities are often more willing to talk to their children about ghosts. Perhaps the rest of us can learn something from those societies. I would believe my kids. 
I, I know that kids have overactive imaginations, but knowing what I know is out there, I wouldn't just ignore it. I, I would do something about it. I would talk to them about it at the very least. And uh, I'm sure that together we could fix it. I have no regrets. Uh, I would not change anything that's happened to me in my past because I think it shaped me into the person that I am today. I mean, it's not the only thing. There's been a lot of other help by a lot of other special people, but um, it's definitely helped, and, and, and I'm glad I'm, I am who I am today. For more ghostly encounters, go to myviva.ca slash ghostly encounters.